Oh, it'd be lovely to do some stats today, wouldn't you say? Well, let's go ahead and do it then. Get into my... Actually, I should probably give you some background. So, uh, recently, I decided to go on the World Wide Web and find a data set, a real data set this time, not one that I made up, and demonstrate how I might go about analyzing a mixed model. So, I ended up finding a data set about pain and different... Uh, treatment options for pain. And uh, we're going to look at that data set and see if we can learn about pain management and stuff. So let's take a look. And here we are in my R screen. So I'll just briefly review. Oh, dear golly. And here we are in R. Yay. So very briefly over here, I am just showing you, I'm not going to go in detail over this, but I read in the data set and the data set was in a uh, wide format and I had to turn it into long format. And so that's what the pivot longer was, but I also had to go wider and long story short, if you want to see it, here's the code. Maybe I'll include a link to the script so you can see what's going on. Um, but basically there are four groups that they were looking at. People who did self-hypnosis and self-care, or they did music therapy and self-care, or they just did self-care, self or they just did self-care, or they did psychoeducation slash CBT. So let's see what happens to these people's pain, shall we? Whoops, got to read all that in. Notice what I've done here is I have one script for importing the data, and then at the very end, I export it as pain underscore formatted. And then I have a different script called analyze underscore data that is just for an analysis. And I recommend breaking your code up into chunks like that. So anyway, going to go ahead and require the things and then I'm going to read in the data set and then might as well just go ahead and take a look here, say. So we've got code that would be like the person's ID, uh, delay onset, sex, age. I don't know what all that stuff is. Well, I know what age is and I don't know what sex is. Yep, I'm old enough to know what sex is. I'm old enough to know how it works. And then we got group here. So self-hypnosis and self-care. Um, and the variables that we're looking at are going to be pain duration, maybe? Actually, anyway, lots of different questions about pain and pain management and diagnoses. And I'm just going to take a small snippet of this. Uh, but first, I am going to read in. I'm going to make a modification in. Actually, I probably should have put this over here since that's a data modification instead of in here, but that's okay. So basically I'm taking the grouping variable and um, re-leveling it, or basically when you do uh, certain types of analyses, it has a referent group. And in this case, I'm saying the referent group is self-care. So every estimate that we have is gonna be relative to that. That's all that's doing. I don't even remember why I did that, but I decided to, so I did. And then I'm also R by default. It saw one, two, three, and four as the time. And it's going to try to fit a linear uh, slope to that. And I decided, you know what, R, I don't want you to do that. I want you to fit a, uh, I want you to treat it as a category, but an ordered category. So time one comes before time two, which comes before time three. And so that's all that's doing now. Um, the research question that I decided to ask, I don't think this is the same question as the original paper did. Uh, instead, I'm just making up my own question. So how does pain intensity change over time for each group? Is that true? No, it isn't. Uh, I need to add more. Um, actually, I'm just going to modify that. So what is the effect of... Um, group on disability controlling for intensity. And I'm also including time in there just to see how these things, because it may be that uh, the effectiveness of a therapy, um, you can see its change over time. Uh, so basically the idea is uh, maybe therapy won't help you, won't alter your pain. And that seems to make sense that, uh, you know, if you have really good therapy, it might not lower your pain, but it will actually help you manage your pain. And so the idea is uh, you're looking at pain disability instead of pain itself. So we're just basically controlling for pain intensity or assuming everybody's the same on pain intensity. 
and seeing if there's a relationship between group and disability across time. That's basically what I'm looking at. And what I decided to do to start with is I decided to um, model all possible interactions. Not because I actually think there are interactions, but I want to allow the model to find those interactions if they are actually there. Because normally, if we are doing just a regular linear model, we would use Flexplot to visualize and say, oh, look, there needs to be a nonlinear effect or an interaction. Uh, we can't do that as easily with mixed models because we've got these cluster variables. So instead, I'm going to fit a model that allows all those things to vary. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize it. Oh, forgot to read in the model. I'm going to fit the model, and then I'm going to visualize it. And it gives me a bunch of warnings, and that's OK. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here and try to interpret this thing. And my head's in the way, but hopefully that's OK. All right. So as I'm looking at this, all these lines seem to fit pretty well. They seem to pass through the center of the data. Um, I do, it seems to be that there could be an interaction. So if you look at all these slopes over here in the self-care group, there's a pretty strong, uh, pretty steep slope there. So the more pain intensity you have, the more your pain disability. But it seems that in the music self-care group, that slope is drastically reduced um, and as well as in the other groups, but uh, especially from here to here. So it seems like there might actually be a uh, bleh, an interaction going on there. You got time one, time two, time three. It doesn't look like they would be interacting over time, just a cross group. So and by the way, um, I forgot to mention this. I'm not only visualizing the full model, I'm also telling the visualize function how I want things to look. So I'm putting pain disability on the Y axis, of course, pain intensity on the X axis, um, and code, or that would be the cluster ID as a color, and then group and time as panels. Why did I do it like that? I think I played around with a couple different things and that one ended up making the, uh, being the clearest to see what's going on. So maybe keep interaction between group and intensity. Is that, yep, that's, what it should be. And so um, that brings up an interesting hypothesis. So originally our hypothesis was not about interaction effects, but along the way we realized uh, maybe we ought to look at that interaction effect just in case it's there, because we don't want to ignore interaction effects if they are there. And so now I'm fitting two new models, one that has an interaction between group and pain intensity and another one that just models the main effects. And so we're going to do our little full and reduced and we get this convergence warning. Um, that's a whole other sort of issue that uh, maybe I'll make another video about what do you do when you get convergence failures. But in this case, it's probably not a big deal. Um, and looks like you can't see the full screen. So I'm going to go ahead and visually compare these two. And I'm going to put pain intensity on the x-axis just because that's how it was before. Let's see, do I still have my plot? Nope, I'm going to have to click zoom again. And so the blue line is the reduced model, which again, the reduced model says there is no interaction. And the red line is the full model. And there are differences, especially in the self-care group. Um, not as many differences out here. So I could see it going either way. I could see doing a model comparison and testing this and it's saying, hey, you ought to keep that. And I can see, anyway, it can go either way. But at least we have a visual. So now let's do the model comparison. And what do we have? We have the P value saying, uh, basically the two models are indistinguishable. So we would go with the simpler of the two. Bayes factor saying, yes, go with the simpler. And the AIC actually says to go with a full model. Uh, so, it's a little ambiguous, but since the base factor is so high, I'm going to say go with the reduced model. Oh, did I read that correctly? Yeah, that's weird. I, I don't know that I've ever had the AIC um, vote against the base factor and the p-value. But there you have it. It looks like it did this time. So it looks like um, there's probably no need for the interaction unless you trust the BI AIC over the BIC and the p-value. So um, now that we have concluded that there are probably no um, 
what's the word, interactions. We're gonna go ahead and fit the model, and I'm just, actually, I don't know that I need to separate that. I'll just move this over. So now I'm doing another model comparison. Again, this is what I originally wanted to look at is the effective group uh, after controlling for pain and intensity and time as well. And so there's my full group that has, uh, or my full model that has group in there, and then my reduce that doesn't have group in there. And then just as before, I'm gonna look at a compare fits. I'm looking at pain disability on group. So I'm just kind of ignoring the other variables and we can do that because we don't have interaction effects. So we can look at these in isolation. And so red model is the full model. The blue model is the reduced and not surprisingly, the reduced is a flat line because again, you didn't model any sort of relationship between group and pain disability. And we do see differences. But again, they're not big differences. So the biggest difference is, looks like it might be self-care. So the full model uh, predicts a lower pain disability than the reduced model. So is that a meaningful difference? I don't know, it could be. Let's go ahead and look at some statistics to find out, shall we? So we're gonna do model.comparison. And if we look at the p-value, the p-value is favoring the full model. Uh, the reduced is actually having a hard time telling. Remember, a base factor of one means I have no idea. There's equal evidence for both models. And this is basically is pretty stinking close to one. So it's having a hard time telling. And then the AIC looks like it favors the full model. So the p-value and the AIC favor the full model. The BIC and the base factor don't know what to say. I guess the base factor technically favors a reduced model, but by a very small margin. Um, so we it's kind of ambiguous at this point. So what do you do? Um, well, since the entire research question was about group, uh, actually, if I were writing this paper, I would report these results and say, hey, it's ambiguous. And then I would show plots, assuming the full model is the one that I chose because that would contain all the variables in the reduced model and more, and then basically let people decide. Uh, let my audience decide, I guess. Anyway, so at this point, I'm feeling pretty good that I know what my model is, even if it's a little ambiguous about whether group should be in there. So at this point, I'm ready to visualize the residuals just to make sure that uh, my model can be trusted. And if I look at this, I see that the residuals are a little leptokurtosis, leptokurtic. I don't think I've ever used that word in all of my YouTube videos, leptokurtic. Uh, long story short, um, it's a normal distribution, but it's got, it's really high. <laughs> so there's a lot of scores in the center and less than you would expect on the outside. That's not a big deal, as long as it's symmetric. Um, it's a little asymmetric because you got, it looks like that one weird outlier out there, but I'm not worried about that. Um, residual dependence plot looks really good, actually. Um, the SL plot looks like we might have some heteroscedasticity, but probably not enough to worry about. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So yay, the visuals look good, that's great. And so now at this point, I want to kind of visualize each of the effects in isolation, kind of the visual partitions idea. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, group. Uh, so pain disability and then group and um, I'll, what I found out when I looked at the plot is, well, I'll show you without that little bit of GG plot code down there. If we just look at this, if you look down, oh, my head's in the way. Let me go ahead and get it out of the way. Um, on my screen, if it were this big, you can see that the labels are overlapping, which is really annoying um, and frustrating. And so what this bit of code here basically does is it says take an angle or rotate those labels by 90 degrees. And so you end up getting um, labels that look like, I gotta pull that up, there you go. You got labels that look like that, that they've just been rotated. And I don't know why that fitted line is doing that. That is odd. Let me run it again and see if it happens again. Hmm, that was weird. You saw it, I got it on video. I don't know why it had weird jagged lines like that, but anyway, doesn't really matter, I guess. Not sure why it is trying to connect those dots, but um, that is showing us the group effect. So let's now go ahead and interpret this. 
Um, this is kind of unexpected and unusual. So it looks like self-care, which is kind of sort of the control condition, at least if I'm understanding the paper correctly, it looks like self-care has the least pain disability. Or in other words, it is the most effective of all the treatments. Better than CBT and better than music self-care, better than self-hypnosis and self-care. So just a simple self-care is the best pain management strategy, according to the study. Now, now again, we don't, uh, it was ambiguous whether that group effect actually made a difference. So we may be reading too much into this, but still probably not good for high, high it's probably not good for our, la, 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 la. it's probably not good for our original hypothesis either way. <laughs> Either it goes in the opposite direction of what we expected or ain't nothing there at all. But let's go ahead and look at the effect of pain intensity on pain disability. And if I pull that open, um, we see... Uh, so each of these individual lines represents the effect of one particular cluster. And they're all over the place. So it's a good thing we modeled it as a random effect to allow each cluster to have their own slope because some of them are actually negative that the more, like for this person right here, the more pain they had, the less their disability. <laughs> it's kind of like they get to a point and they're like, F this, I don't care anymore. <laughs> and then they just get on with their lives, you know? Good for you. If you're in that situation, I feel bad for your pain. But good for you for deciding you ain't gonna let it rule you. Anyway, but overall, it looks like, uh, not surprisingly, the more intense the pain is, the more intense the disability is. Not surprising at all. Now let's look at the effect over time, which is also kind of an interesting thing to look at. So I also plotted each of the individual ones. And remember, we fixed time so that it doesn't have uh, varying slopes. And, and earlier, before y'all got here on the video camera and stuff, I looked at it and it basically... I. I I tried to determine whether it was okay that we model it as a random effect and it didn't really make much of a difference. So it seemed like time is a fixed effect and it looks like what happens that on day one before therapy starts, pain disability is up here and then at time two, it goes down very slightly. And then time three, maybe it goes down a little more, but probably more levels out. And then pain three to four, maybe it goes down slightly. So basically, it looks like these therapies are doing very, very little. Maybe they're reducing pain a little bit. So that's unfortunate for those who put so much effort into trying to reduce these pain, the pain of these patients. It didn't seem to make a difference. That's unfortunate. So yeah, that was uh, pretty easy, I guess. Give you some ideas of how I might approach a mixed model analysis. As always, if there are any questions, let me know. And yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Peace out.